change for me today. Uh, someone suggested that it might be a good idea for me to do a, a bit of a beginner's video on astrophotography. Um, and considering that amateur level astrophotography is pretty much where I'm at at the moment, um, that's probably a good place for me to start. Um, I particularly wanted to do a video starting with the absolute most basic straightforward kit that I use for any of my astrophotography. Um, so I've started with just my DSLR camera body, um, a lens that I'll tell you about in a little while, and a tripod. It really is that is simple, that is all I've got. So let me just run you through the main bits of kit that I'm going to be using for tonight's session. Um, starting with the business end up at the front here, this is a Sigma 20mm f1.8 lens. Um, it does allow me full manual control of the focus, which is important. I'll explain why later. The camera body is a Canon EOS 600D. Um, I bought it in 2013 for about 800 quid. You can now pick up this same camera body online secondhand for well under 200 pound. It's actually reduced in, in value that much. Um, Next down here, this is a Benro G2 ball head. Um, now, I don't think you can buy this particular model new anymore. You might be lucky enough to find one on eBay or something like that. But have a look on the Benro website or any good quality and um, heavy capacity gear head will do for astrophotography. As long as you've got full control over the, uh, the pan and the tilt and all aspects of the camera um, positioning, then it's a, it's a good one. Next one down here, this is my Benro tripod. This is a Benro Mark III uh, carbon tripod. Again, I don't think you can still buy this one new, but I, I stand to be corrected on that one. Um, this one gives you full control over height. It also allows you, if you need to, to bring these legs out at many different angles so that you can, uh, so that you can really get a good solid fixing on any level that you're on. Um, and that's it, that's the four bits of kit that make up my astrophotography, my most basic astrophotography rig. A um, couple of other bits that I am going to be using tonight. This here, because of where I am in, the, in Telford here, this is, a, um, this is a light pollution filter that I'm going to be clipping inside my camera body. That's just to filter out any yellow light, any yellow glow from street lights around, although I have to say, Telford Council have replaced so many of our old uh, sodium style street lamps with LEDs these days that actually it makes not a huge amount of difference at all to be honest with you but we'll, uh, we'll give that a bit of use tonight anyway. Uh, the other thing I'm going to be using as well is this. This is a Carson Lumi Loop and what it does is it quite simply when I come to focusing a bit later on using my screen here that is going to magnify everything on my screen by 10 times so that I can really dial in on the sharpest point of focus uh, for my stars. Okay, that's it. That's all I'm going to be using tonight. I'm starting with an absolute basic rig to show you guys how this can be done. In terms of the cost of this lot, as I've said, you can get that camera body for well under £200 now online. The lens, if you want a decent lens, you're going to spend the money. This lens was on eBay. This cost me £200. Okay, so, you know, arguably that lens is actually a better quality than this camera body justifies, but if you haven't got a decent lens, nothing is going to be of any good quality, so that's important. The Benro gear down here, yeah, this was expensive stuff, but you don't need to, you don't need to go for that. I mean, between the two here, between the ball head and the tripod, you're probably looking in the region of 500 quid if you can find them both new. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe leave, um, maybe go for a cheaper tripod, cheaper ball head. I went for them because they're absolutely rock solid. If you want to see a good review on the Benro tripod, have a look at Alan Wallace, um, A-L-Y-N, Wallace uh, he's done a great review on that um, one or two people will have noticed that I haven't connected up my intervalometer this bad boy here to the camera tonight there's a good reason for that and I'll explain that a bit later on okay so this is it this is my setup I'm in my garden here in Telford and the biggest section of sky I've got to aim at is in sort of northwest direction and um, so that's the direction I'm going to be mostly pointing in tonight mostly shooting in I can potentially 
move the camera somewhere else and, and get a little bit more southerly direction, but the leaves coming on the trees at the moment and it's really blocking out a huge amount of the sky. So I'm going for northwest and potentially a bit more directly above me as well. Um, so I'll be back with you a little bit later on and we'll have a look at my settings for astrophotography. Okay folks, so let's take a look at the settings I'm going to be using for astrophotography this evening. Now typically, when you turn your camera on, you might see something like this. This is the auto setting on, uh, on my camera. To start with, we want to scrap that. We're not going to be using an auto setting at all. We're going to go full manual control of this camera. Okay, so manual exposure means that I've got control over every aspect of my exposure. So, um, generally speaking, what you see in front of you here is, is a standard set of settings for normal daytime photography. You might have your ISO set to auto, possibly. Um, you will most likely have your uh, picture quality set to, or picture size rather, set to something other than RAW, probably. I mean, for highest quality pictures, many of you will tend to keep it on that setting there, uh, which in, in my case gives you 18 megapixels. Um, what I tend to do is shoot in RAW, and what that means is that I've got a full editing control later. It gives my computer, my uh, Lightroom program, access to every aspect of the, uh, the picture's quality and uh, control settings as well at an editing stage, not just at a capture stage. So we're shooting in RAW. Um, I am going to set my ISO to start with to probably 400 as a starting point and see how I get on and that's something that I will change depending on the results that I get as we uh, as we sh capture some images tonight. My f-stop I'm going to make as low as I possibly can as I said this lens allows me to go f1.8 so that's where we're going. Shutter speed this is the important one okay now there is something called the rule of 500. There's also a rule of 300 that some people follow as well. But either way, what you do is you take 500 and you divide that by the length of the focal length of your lens. Okay, now my lens, as I mentioned earlier, is a 20 millimeter lens. So if I divide 500 by 20 millimeters, in theory, I can change my shutter speed to a 25 second exposure. So we're going to start with that. I don't generally like to do 25 second exposures, but if I change it to 25 to start with, then that's where we go. We'll see what results we get on that. And what we might then do is consider changing our ideas to the rule of 300, which you do exactly the same thing. Divide 300 by your focal length, which would dictate in my case that with a 20 millimeter lens, I'd be getting a 15 second exposure. So we'll see if that works better tonight than the rule of 500. Okay, next on my settings here, we'll move down and you'll see that I've got my timer self timer set here that is absolutely crucial okay now i can do a two second but i'd rather do a 10 just for just for the sake of being absolutely uh, thorough what that allows me to do is press the shutter and then move my hands away from the rig completely allowing the camera to sit absolutely still it removes all camera shake any effect of my touching it take is taken away and when the camera opens its shutter it is absolutely still so that is what we're going for, all right? And that's it. There's the settings that you want for astrophotography as a starting point. We'll talk more tonight about how you change those based on the results that you're getting. Well, good evening, everyone. So I've come back out into the garden. Um, it's about half past nine. Um, full darkness is not, uh, is not going to be uh, until about quarter to 11 tonight um, if you're not sure what I mean by full darkness exactly um, it's the end of astronomical twilight um, again look that up it's worth knowing um, essentially it's the point where the sun is at least 18 degrees below the horizon um, anything more than that and uh, and it doesn't get any darker anymore it just keeps you know stays the same darkness and and when we reach a certain point in the year we don't get that full darkness anymore so we do lose out a little bit on the on the night sky um, the camera on my phone is not good enough for me to film what I can see at the moment 
Um, Venus is up tonight, uh, very, very bright. Um, I am struggling a little bit with my night vision this evening because I've had to set up this light down here for you to be able to see me by. Um, but I'm gonna do my best to show you the process of, of setting up a camera um, for taking some astro photographs. So, here we go. The camera is here and, uh, and it is all ready to go. But what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna move you so that you can see the screen and hopefully get a good idea for what I'm doing. So bear with me. Okay, so here's the camera all set up, ready to go. I'm just gonna get the screen to, uh, to light up again. Right, so these are the same settings that I showed you a little while ago. Um, I've set my shutter speed to 25 seconds, f1.8 and ISO set at 400. Um, as you remember, I've got the old, uh, I've got the 10 second timer set down here as well. So we're all ready to go and try taking a um, taking an exposure of the night sky. Now, focus is obviously that's something that we need to discuss here. Okay. What I've got here is a little film just showing you what an infinity sign looks like. You want to focus your lens to infinity as a starting point, okay? And then what we want to do is point our camera at a star. Okay, so what I've done here is I've turned my camera over to live view mode. And you can see just down in the, in the corner of the screen here, this white point, that's Venus that you can see there. There's another star over here that I can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move the camera so that that star comes into the center here. And then I'm going to use my uh, use my zoom buttons over here to focus right in and zoom right in on one of those stars as closely as I can. OK, so this is how Venus looks when you uh, when you use your digital zoom to focus right into zoom right in on that one star and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to turn the focus ring on the lens now so that you can see the lens is set to infinity but if i turn you'll see live view let's turn off if i turn the focus ring you'll see that 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 can still change and what we're looking for is the smallest point of light. And I think that's about, about there. Okay, so we turn off live view, go back to our settings. And what I'm gonna do now, I can move the camera around now. I can move the camera around now and point it wherever I want to see if I can get anything uh, worthwhile. So it's still an hour until full darkness. But let's have a look. I'm going to take an exposure at 25 seconds, ISO 400, and uh, and let's see how we get on. Okay, so I've pointed it at a, a nice-ish area of the sky. Well, let's see what we get. Here we go. 10-second timer. It's counting down there. I want to move away slightly just to make sure there's no chance of me kicking the kicking the camera tripod or anything like that. There's the shutter. And now it'll go about 25 seconds before it closes again. All right, so that has taken an exposure. I just push the uh, playback button here. Right, what we've got there, it's very, actually, you can't see that. There we go. So that's what we've got. Now, when I look up into the sky, I can't see 1% of the stars that have shown up in that image. It is incredible what's up there when you take your first one of these long exposure photographs. You will be amazed. The line across the middle there, that's a little bit of cloud that's coming across. Um, so there's so much to see when you get your first look at one of these. It's unbelievable. I'm quite pleased with that photo, actually. The stars are, they're nice lines rather than being, uh, nice points rather than being lines. If I zoom in, right in on one of the stars you can see they're nice and round i know it's not the greatest thing to see they're nice and round you can just just start to see that that star is slightly elongated in that direction it's not quite a perfect circle and that is because we've used the rule of 500 over the rule of 300. okay what i mean by that is that the stars moved very, very slightly during that 25 second exposure, which has made them slight lines rather than perfect points. So, I mean, if I was being really picky with my exposure settings there, what I could do would be to just change that to 20, change my exposure time to 20. 
Right, rather than changing any other settings, we've just changed our exposure to 20 seconds now. Let's try another one, see what the difference is without changing anything else. 10 second timer will count down and then I'll bring you back after it's taken. Okay, the shutter is just closed. Let's take a look at that one. All right, so it's a slightly, slightly darker image because it was a shorter exposure. It hasn't gathered as much light. Let's zoom in again on the same point. I think it was that star just there. And you can see it's, it's rounder. It's definitely rounder than it was before. There's no stretching in this direction. And um, so I'm quite happy that a 20 second exposure with this lens is exactly where I want to be. And actually that's quite a nice image. Obviously you can see there's a little bit of brighter sky down in this bottom right hand corner here. That's because that's the direction the sun's disappeared over the horizon behind my house. Um, and that, in theory, that should disappear in an, in an hour or so when we reach full blackness, full darkness. So I'm going to bring you back when we've got full darkness and we'll see how we get on there. Okay, so I've come back out and I wanted to just show you, first of all, that even though we focused this before, if you have a look and zoom back in, it's worth pointing out that actually the focus has shifted very slightly. So I'm going to zoom in to a smaller star than I used before, smaller star than Venus. So we should now be focused even better than we were last time. Right, let's see how well this interprets onto, onto camera. Right, that is the first picture I took. 25 second ISO 400. That's the second picture I took. 20 seconds ISO 400, slightly darker. And this is another one I've just taken. This is 20 seconds ISO 200. Okay. Okay, so I'm back out, it's full darkness now. Um, we've got the uh, end of the astronomical twilight has come, it's about quarter to 11 at night now. Um, there are apps that, you, that can tell you that, by the way, if, you, you know, if you're not exactly sure how to figure that out. What I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some more exposures. I'm gonna vary the settings a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can find a really interesting part of the night sky in the direction that I can point my camera tonight. I'll show you a few of those photos after I've edited them. Um, and I'll make sure that across the bottom of each one, I've put the settings. Now, you, what you need to know, uh, from a basic point of view, it's all about changing the amount of information that is gathered by the sensor, okay? And what the sensor then does with that information before it presents you with an image, okay? So a longer exposure will gather more light, more information. Uh, a, a lower f-stop or a faster f-stop will open the camera up more to take in more of that information as well while the shutter is open and a higher ISO it's a very crude explanation of it but it's like turning up the volume on a stereo it amplifies the signal that the camera sensor has has collected okay so basically you want to limit your ISO to a point and um, if you have a look online for um, ISO variation then there is a point with every camera where changing your ISO as you go up doesn't make any difference anymore um, and you can still edit it back to a, to a reasonable point um, but as I say you'll see the difference as I take as I take various shots and put down the ISO levels and the other uh, the other settings along the bottom of the screen here so I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to take some more shots and um, oh one last thing to point out your night vision um, when you sit in a dark room, your eyes gradually get used to the amount of light in there and eventually you can see. It takes about half an hour until you can see as well as you're going to be able to see uh, in a dark room. It's exactly the same at night. If you stand out in the dark for about half an hour, you will be able to see as many stars as you're ever going to be able to see with the naked eye. So it's worth not blinding yourself with a torch. A lot of people will use a red head torch, okay? Now this headlight that I've got down here, it does have a red setting on it, but for some ridiculous reason, the red lights shine out of the side of it instead of out the front. Um, I still haven't figured out what idiot designer came up with that yet, and I will name and shame the make and, brand, the make and model of torch um, at the bottom of this screen when I've gone in and checked exactly what it is. Um, 
so I need a new one to be quite honest with you and I'll be looking for one fairly soon um, so anyway rant over I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna take some shots with this uh, I'm gonna leave the camera running so you can see me mucking around you'll notice that I disappear out of shots so get away from the camera so that I don't knock it at all I want them as pin sharp as I possibly can and then I'll take them to the editing suite that's a different story because my editing skills are far too haphazard for me to tell you how to do anything like that I certainly don't have any kind of workflow in place at the moment so you're just gonna have to put up with seeing my edited images afterwards and look for someone else's uh, someone else's tutorial on how to edit astrophotography images because I'm not at a point where I'm confident enough to share that information with you just yet. Okay, here we go. a bit of a bonus image if you take lots of long exposure photographs and stack them one on top of the other you get these this is called a star trail photograph and it's made up of 87 one minute long images stacked on top of each other And as a starting point, folks, that's pretty much all you need to know to get going. If you've got any questions about anything I've been through in this video, please don't uh, be afraid to ask. Stick them in the comments below. I'll answer every one of them. Um, sorry the images that I've captured haven't been fantastic from my little light polluted garden here in Telford, but when I'm able to get out and about again, hopefully I'll be able to capture something a bit more interesting. I'd really love to see the kind of things that you guys manage to capture with this new knowledge uh, from your own locations wherever you are in the world right now and that's it from me Richie at Wild Astro if you like what you've seen today please hit that like button consider subscribing and um, leave me a comment ask any questions that you want to below and I'll see you next time this is Richie from Wild Astro signing off <laughs>